Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary and to our lectionary podcast. Today's gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, we'll be looking at verses 23 to 28 and the story of the plucking of grain on the Sabbath. And so this is the way Mark writes it. And it happened uh, that he, that is Jesus, on one of the Sabbaths, um, he was making his way, he was going through the grain fields. And the disciples began to also, they air canto, to make their way. And we know that they were plucking, talontos, the, the heads of wheat. Now, um, this is nothing unusual. And uh, the disciples, no doubt, were, were hungry. And uh, they were having a little snack on the wheat, which was quite acceptable in that time, according to the law. But the Pharisees, seizing on every opportunity to uh, destroy Jesus, uh, want to bring down his disciples a notch. So the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, behold, um, what it is that they, that is, what they are doing on the Sabbath, behold, what they are doing on the Sabbath is not exist. Existent, it is not permitted. So they are doing what is not permitted on the Sabbath, which is presumably to, to rest. And um, so they, they are tough teachers of the, of the law. Um, but Jesus answers them. Now it's interesting that this comes up early in the Gospel of Mark. In the Gospel of Matthew, you have the ten miracles in chapters 8 and 9. And then in chapter 10, you have Jesus sending out the disciples. And then in 11 and 12, that's where you have the Sabbath day miracles or controversies. And it's important to consider because um, during the ministry of St. Paul in the epistles, the, the, the question really is about circumcision. Must you be circumcised in order to be saved? But before that controversy ever hit, there was the question of the Sabbath. And um, I mean, you can see why that would be difficult because the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, well, that's in the Ten Commandments. So um, the Pharisees thought that they had Jesus and the disciples, not simply on a minor Levitical law, but in fact, they're breaking one of the Ten Commandments. And of course, it's, it's Matthew and of course, Jesus who teaches that um, the Sabbath is, uh, is a symbol uh, looking forward to the day of rest to be found in Christ Jesus, who is the Lord of the Sabbath and who is, in fact, our Sabbath day rest. And he fulfills the Sabbath by, by resting in the tomb on that Saturday, uh, thus sanctifying our rest in the tomb and beginning a new day with the resurrection, the eighth day, the third day, but now we're still working through it. How are, we, how are the disciples going to deal uh, with this? And how is Jesus going to deal with the, with the charge? And um, so uh, Jesus points them back to Scripture. Now, again, we don't have the name again, but he said to them, we just know who he is, have you never read... Now, in some ways, that's a little cut on the Pharisees. Of course, they should have read the Scriptures, but have you never read what David did? So, David, the great king, Jesus is the son of David. Have you ever not, have you read what, have you never read what Jesus, or what David did? Sorry about that. Um, when he had need, and he, I love this, he, hung, he hungered, and also those who were with him. Now, this is an interesting phrase, and uh, we're going to find it um, in reference to Jesus and his disciples. So here, David is a prototype of, of Jesus, and those who are with him, I suppose, are a prototype 
of the disciples, of Jesus' own disciples. And he says, have you never read what they did when they had need and he hungered and those also who are with him? And it says how he went into the house of God that is in the temple during the time when Abiathar was the high priest. And what he did was he ate, now this is remarkable, the bread of presentation, which is the bread of presence. Now, this, mirror, this story then works on a couple of levels. One, it shows us Jesus' relationship to the Sabbath. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. I also think it um, prepares us for Mark's teaching about bread, specifically in the Eucharist. And I think it's worth thinking about this for one moment. Um, when we think of John 6, for instance, we think of the bread that came down from heaven, the manna. And the manna, of course, fed the children of Israel in the desert during those 40 years. But there was another bread that was very special to the Israelites, and that was the bread of presence. And the bread of presence was bread that was baked and made by the priests every week. And they would bring it into the holy place onto the table, uh, the showbread sometimes it's called, and they would put it into the holy place. And when they put the new bread on, they would take the bread that had been in the holy place on the table there for a week, and they would eat it. The priests would eat it um, along with their families. Now, this was a priestly food, and it signified the presence of our Lord, that the Lord God was, was with um, his people somehow in some holy way in this bread. And I think this is anticipating the day when Jesus himself would uh, take this, offer us a new bread of presence which we would then, as the new priesthood, eat. So it is that um, this bread was only for the priests, but now David eats it. And in a sense, um, it, it prepares us for the Lord's Supper when we, as a nation of, uh, of priests, a royal priesthood, also eat this bread, which is at once the bread from heaven, like the manna, but is also this bread of presence. So the Lord is with us. So do you not remember that he ate these loaves of presence or this loaves of presentation, um, which is not lawful. Again, that's that word um, which the, the Pharisees had used against the disciples. They said, well, it was not lawful to eat for except for the priests. And he also gave it to those who were, those who were with him. And um, this is the, the meal that we celebrate with our Lord, the bread that we eat with our Lord even today is anticipated by what David did. So uh, then he says to them, um, he asks this question, uh, or the Sabbath is on account of man. Uh, man is not a, on account of uh, the Sabbath, that is to say the Sabbath was made as a day of rest uh, for us. Uh, we were not made for the rest. So here, mercy triumphs. David does the right thing um, because he is hungry and in need and because those who are with him are hungry and are in need. And indeed, we're going to see this sort of thing happen again in the Gospel of Mark um, where I think a beautiful place where we see it is in the feeding of the 5,000, where in the Gospel of Mark, for instance, we are told that um, they are sheep. Jesus sees the people, and he sees that they are like sheep without a shepherd. And we're reminded of David, who is the, the good shepherd. And um, it says he has them uh, re recline in garden plots. And it's all very reminiscent of Psalm 23, the great psalm, of David and the Good Shepherd. Uh, so it is that the Sabbath is on account of man, not the man for the Sabbath. So he does away with a kind of a false legalism that was, um, that was promoted uh, by the Pharisees with the result 
that uh, the Lord is the Son of so the the Lord or the Son of Man is the Lord of also as also the Lord of the Sabbath. Now, again, we mentioned that this points to Christ's death in the tomb, but it also reminds us that uh, David's son is in fact David's Lord. So it is also a way of saying that it's Jesus through whom the world was created, that he is the Lord of all, that he is the Lord of creation, because he is the Lord of the Sabbath, because the Sabbath came through him, and also he is the great Sabbath who gives us our rest. Well, thank you very much for uh, looking at this uh, short reading with us today, and I pray that you have a blessed Sunday.